Hi, what I'd like to do is demonstrate to you this morning how to remove a bezel, sometimes called a faceplate, from an IBM half height LTO3 tape drive. Now this applies to a lot of other half height drives as well. Uh, some of it applies to a full height drive as well. One of the things I'd like to point out to start off with is that there is this little RF shielding strip that goes over the top. It's, you know, and, and basically it's just uh, a, a heating uh, tape that goes over pipes. You just move that out of the way, IBM uses it for uh, internal shielding. Now, the point I'd like to make here, if you look at the spacing from the front of the bezel to this tab, it's about a half inch. If you look at the spacing from the front of this bezel to the tab, it's about a quarter inch. So having said that, you have a short end and a long end. Always on bezel replacements, if you take removing it, you want to start out at the long end. I typically use a small screwdriver like that, and you just push the tab in a little bit and wiggle the bezel, be, uh, bezel back just a little, and get the other tab and move it back a little more, and then you can remove this side that has the long tabs, and then this side comes out with the short tabs. Fairly simple. Um, reinsertion is the same. Get the short tabs in there first. And get them positioned in the holes. And bring the long tabs in. And you can get them started just a little bit with your finger. Just a little to get, the, get them in there right, like so. And then you can push them down and make sure they're locked in place. And that covers it. Now, if that's all you wanted to learn about is bezel replacement, that's fine. If you wanted to um, learn a few, few more things about some of the anomalies involved with tape drives and external cases, um, stay tuned. Once we take off the RF shielding on this, you'll see a sign underneath these particular drives saying the maximum length of the screws used in here is 2.5 millimeter. So, the screws that you took out, make sure you put them back in. If you lose one, they're not too hard, they're not, they're easy to lose, trust me. Uh, you can't put anything longer than a 2.5 millimeter in. So that applies on both sides. And you won't see it with this uh, RF shielding over it, but you know it's there. The other thing is that on a server, for example, you may have um, some jumpers on these pins here. And all this is, is the SCSI ID setting. It's a binary system with a base two. So no jumpers on, it's zero. One jumper on the first setting is one. Take off the jumper off the first pin, put it on the second pin. Now the SCSI ID is two. Put one on the first one and the second one, SCSI ID three. So if you have that, take a picture with your cell phone just to make sure you know how those settings are and then compare them. They're a very small jumper. That's all they are, that big. They're kind of tiny. Just make sure you get them back on in the right place. Now, if you have this device in an external enclosure, you're going to have a, actually a plug that's going to plug into the SCSI ID. Now, the plug is key. So it's got a little tab on the, on the top, and you've got a hole on the top here, so you can insert that only one way into that particular setting. So, and then that controls the little thumb switch back here for the SCSI ID. One of the most other important things to do is this power connector. Um, the power connector itself fits in, only can fit in one way, and it's, it's, it's keyed a little bit. You've got some round ends on top and square on the bottom. So you look and you say, okay, the round ends are on the top, square ends on the bottom, sticking the power connector in here. Now these guys uh, can be really tough to get out. And they have a couple little ears you can see on here, and those are where your fingers go to grab it. And you wiggle it sideways, okay, I'm going sideways with it, wiggling the plug out this way. What we've seen some people do is... Try to take the plug and wiggle it up and down. Well, it's not designed to be wiggled up and down. 
the tolerances are real small, so it's designed to come out this way. If you wiggle it up and down, you may have a tendency, and we've seen this happen a lot, to break off the bottom of this connector, just the plastic part of the connector, off the motherboard. So they'll crack it right here, just being too aggressive, trying to pull it out up and down. You've got to go sideways. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to get a hold of us. Uh, we're at uh, Midwest Technical Sales, and our phone number is 888-822-TAPE. So feel free to give us a call if you need any help with bezels. Um, you know, the other bezels kind of look similar. This happens to be an LTO bezel. It's got two screws that hold it in, and it comes out the same manner. Um, last thing is this flap here. That's what breaks on the LTO3 half height bezels. These little tabs break off, and, and it's a real flimsy design. Um, truthfully, this flap is nothing more than a cosmetic um, piece of material. It does nothing to stop dirt from going in. It does nothing to impede the airflow. And actually, when you insert a tape into it, it just pushes it out of the way, and, and it makes it look cosmetically nice. So. If you're looking at it, take the tape out, it looks like this, you're happy. Uh, flap is broken off, it's going to look like this, no flap. Ex absolutely has no effect on the drive, it's purely cosmetics. So don't be too worried about the flap unless you have a cosmetic thing that you'd like to do. Hey, thanks for watching, appreciate it, take care.